coming up today on the Nice Guys on Business. When you see somebody doing something you want, it doesn't necessarily have to be in business. It could be in their relationships with their spouse or their relationships with their kids or what they have built into them just because of the luck of probability of their life experiences, everything lined up to take the actions necessary. And because of that, it doesn't matter what barrier gets put up in front of them. It doesn't matter how many people tell them, no, they can't do it. They already have the internal decision that yes, they can, and they're just going to go do it. And they don't need everybody else to tell them. Listen. Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not from some farcical aquatic ceremony or the nice guys on business. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Welcome back. Welcome back, Funkin' fans. It is Friday. You made it through the week. That is, if you have a Monday through Friday week, which Doug and I don't. We're seven-day-a-week kind of guys. <laughs> but that is because we love you so much, and we're working so hard for you. Strickland Every Bonner on this day. side, Doug Sandler on the other side. Sorry, Doug. Every day is Christmas. Every day is Christmas. <laughs> Every day is Christmas for me. It feels like seven days a week, I just to give joy and uh, and goodwill towards all mankind seven days a week. You know, you know Rick's going to call in and go, what do you mean oh, it's geez. Christmas? You're Jewish. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that, but that's yeah. a... You make a you make a valuable point. You know what? I gotta start. I gotta start saying those personal mantras to myself, as as uh, as our guest today, uh, Craig Hollenberger, mentions many many times. Jeez. Yeah. Tell oh, me wait, about I'll, the. Uh, let, tell me about okay, the. Okay, hold on. We'll get into that in just one quick second. Let's. Um. I I want to promote one thing that we really have been negligent in promoting yeah. over the last uh, several months, and it is mm-hmm. the fact that we have a Facebook community. We do. You know, I think ever since Dan Rice <laughs> abandoned his post. Abandoned oh, his post. I know you hate so when I mean. say that. No, we love no, you, Dan. Dan. I don't even know if he's still a listener anymore, but we do love Dan, and you've been incredibly oh, helpful. And we do not feel that you abandoned no, us. No, okay? Not even for half a second. Not even for half a second. Actually, um, since Dan was was uh, was responsible enough to probably follow the money trail and trying to figure out what he could do to actually make a living outside of uh, the nice guy community, because we mm-hmm. paid him bupkis. He, he mm-hmm. we we got back from him um, what we should have. <laughs> yeah, anything that he gave to the community was perfect, but the uh, but we deserve nothing, and that's um, right now until we have these new co-mayors taking over uh tennessee tim and uh and (laughs) patient zero paul (laughs) we uh our facebook community is in need of your love everybody come on over to the facebook community just go to uh, facebook and type in the nice guys community and you will find us we are right there we are inviting you and we want you as a part of the community uh we do post some bonus photos there we post some fun shenanigans we um uh, we asked some polls. It, there was a poll that recently came out. What was the poll that? What was the poll? Do you remember? Let's Let me see if I can go. Hold on. Let me go to it. I forget. I forget. <laughs> Tim I just it. posted uh, Les- a picture of Leslie Nielsen saying, "Good luck." We're all counting on you. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Paul Morena um, uh, with today's episode, Doug and Strickland asked. Number one, keep playing Rick's messages. Two, two optional. Who the fuck is Rick? I hope we're not going to offend uh, Craig with that. No, um, no. Stop giving Rick airtime. Wait, wait. Who were you worried that we were going to offend? Oh, Craig, our guest today. Oh, 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 yeah, right. yeah. The interview I, today. You know. Wait a minute. Does does he does Craig have a choice? Well, not really, but I don't want to purposely offend somebody who may be a little more conservative and wouldn't appreciate me dropping the F-bomb in the intro. No, I think, I think Craig would be okay with that. I mean, I, I don't think that we're asking him to participate in that or to uh, to condone our, our use of the four-letter <laughs> F-bomb, but certainly, uh, you know, the, if are you, I don't feel like he wants to control the show at all. As a matter of fact, I think that he probably would feel quite comfortable with us just doing us. Okay, well, you interviewed him. You know better than me, so I trust you. I trust you. It, it's not like we have to worry about like having uh, Emily Post's daughter on the show, right? Or anything you, like that. You can very easily find it if you if you search for the Nice Guy Community on Facebook. You can find it, but you can also go to one nice shortcut dot com. That's the number one nice shortcut dot com and get there too. We have nice shortcut dot com, but it, the redirect hasn't been set up yet, so don't use that right now. I know you've been very busy. Very busy I have indeed. Been. It has not been a priority, <laughs> especially since uh, so I got I, one nice shortcut.com too. I mean, you know, it's it, 
it works. It's good. All right. So, so let me, let me tell you something a little unusual about our guest today, which I think is kind of cool also because it, definitely unique. So here's what we did. Craig got in touch with me through Kim Tracy at the, um, at the Maxwell James Agency, where mm-hmm. a lot of our recent interviews have come from because they have a, a full book of, um, of professional speakers and they want to get more exposure and they figure that coming on podcasts would be a way to do that. Anyway, so Craig gets in touch with me and he sends me an email. He said, hey, listen, I really need to show you what I do rather than just talk to you about what I do. And I'm thinking, okay, this is some sort of visual thing. So um, I say, okay, let's get, let's get on the phone together and, or Skype together and let's get on video and, and you'll show me exactly what you do. Blew my mind. Yeah. He, he shows me this, this way that he has to get in touch with um, your subconscious mind in ways that you really have never thought would even be possible. And he does this really unique, very creative exercise. Now, you may think it's, t- it's challenging to describe that through audio. And if you were to ask that, say that, I would tell you, you are correct. So here's, <laughs> so here's what we have done, which is very cool. Um, as of the day that this is airing, which is, uh, what, what day? this is 9-8, right? Friday. September 8th, that's, yes. that's the date that this is airing. Yep. So as of the date that this is airing, Craig is going to have on his website, which we'll have access to through the show notes, he will have the video that we reference many times in the, uh, in the interview coming. He will actually have the video of him showing me how to do this exercise on the air, which I thought was kind of cool. I love it. So, uh, yeah, ever want to get in touch with your subconscious self? Ever just try to dig deep and try to figure out what it is that that makes you tick? And then how to kind of break through some of those things that we do through nothing more than habit that are really like tearing you down and and possibly leading you towards failure in your life? That is, uh, he he shows you in in a really simple exercise how to do it. So, um Check out the video, check out the audio first, listen to the interview, and we'll make reference to the, uh, to the video a couple of times. So if you hear that at the end of this uh, podcast, just go ahead and click on, the, uh, click on the, the video. You can listen to the audio without doing the video at all, but I think it makes it for much more fun. And I think the video is only like three or four minutes long anyway, so it's pretty cool. Definitely a very interesting interview, and I love the, the, the kind of mind hacking idea, right? I mean, there are things that we do and habits that we have that we don't even realize sometimes why we have them. Or realize how can we break them and we just don't know. And this is a really, I, I, I'm going to start using this technique. It's very interesting. I like well, it. Well, if you think in listening to this that the that you're getting in touch with your woo-woo self, like if there's this like esoteric, this, uh, you know, very transformational thing that ha- this is just reality. This is how our brains work. Our brains are trained to take shortcuts. And uh, this is a pretty cool shortcut that he shows you how to get in touch with uh, rather quickly. Uh, using this simple exercise. So listen to the episode, uh, check out the video, and um, let's just get to the interview with uh, Craig Hollenberger here on the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Have you ever thought my life would just be so much better if, or I wish I knew how to do this, or I I wish I'd stopped doing that? Well, today's guest, Craig Hollenberger, he taps into your core to help you transform your life. Now, that might sound like hype, but I got to tell you, I just did a video with him for about 15 minutes. This is not hype. This is not BS. This is reality. Uh, His success rate is his proof of excellence. He's got plenty of testimonials. I will be one of those guys that will share a testimonial as well. Here to share why past performance is not an indicator for your future success or failure. Welcome, Craig, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I, so the nice guy community that is tuning in right now has no idea what we just spent the last 15 or 20 minutes doing. And I want to make it really clear that uh, that we're going to put a, a link in the show notes that's going to be to a video. Uh, and maybe we can do, you know, maybe Craig, we can maybe maybe we can put this on your website so you get the traffic. I would love too. to do that. Yeah, so I would love to do, do that. that. And yeah. So I'll share this video with you. We'll put a link up, all behind the scenes stuff. But Nice Guy community, just click on the link if you want to see the video of Mr. Nice Guy. Actually, <laughs> try to figure out why he's having a communication issue with his wife. <laughs> we'll, we'll tune in. So uh, welcome, welcome, Craig, to the uh, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Well, I really appreciate you having me and giving me the opportunity to share the information that I have with with your community. Well, what's so cool is you have this this process called the art of being successful, and um, it is an art, isn't it? It very much is an art. You know, I I really wanted to go down the art idea of it. I come from a science background of being in IT, 
But there is an art to this. It's not black and white. It's not defined. And that was one of my biggest gripes when I would go into my own self-development is, you know, you'd see somebody would say, well, this worked for me, so it's got to work for you. Well, not necessarily because we're all very unique. We all have very unique backgrounds. And, you know, just because some mantra or some recording worked for you doesn't necessarily mean my brain is going to accept it the same way. Well, you spend a lot of time. Uh, you spend a lot of time in your seminars that I see on stage, and in a lot of the writing that you do. You, you spend it speaking about or writing about three things: clarity, focus, and confidence. So, mentally preparing and building is that really the key to success, or is there something else? Because it seems like that's such a holistic approach to success. Is there something more than that? It's it, it can't be that simple, or is it? It, it, it really is that simple, but it, but it, the key is understanding that you and I operate off of how we've lived life. You know, if, if let's just use a very simple idea of be living healthy, right? If you and I grew up in a household that ate a colorful plate and our parents exercised all the time and they had us exercising all the time as we became teenagers and young adults, then that's something that's going to stay with us for the rest of our life. It's going to be very hard to make us not do it. If we grew up in households that that was not the priority of the way life was driven, then you get older and you want to be that way. We have a lot of things we have to work through um, in order to be able to make that change. That was the first change I wanted to make when I started using these techniques was, you know, I just want to live a healthier life. And now Mm -hmm. I'll go run in a rainstorm because it's it's the day for me to go run. I'll go run at 11 o'clock at night if that's the time I have to run. So just as much as your tapes can be negative and the stuff that you have going off in your head can be negative, it can also work toward to help you and to help you focus more, to be more confident, to be more clear about what your what your goals are. How is it that you that you can get through? Oh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. I don't, wait, before we, but wait, let's before we get into the process, though. Can you, sorry, you know, I, I, I'm, I and my community knows this. I'm all over the place, and I always am. And I and you start talking about things, and I'm like, I want to jump right into them, but I don't know enough about, or I do know a little bit about, but not enough about to share with the community about your background and your story. So, can you share a little bit about what brought you here, and uh, and talk about why this is something that you have discovered or found in your life or created for yourself? Absolutely. So just real quickly, so I grew up in a very upper middle class household. I got exposed to a lot of very successful people as a golfer. I fell in love with golf. I still play golf. And that kind of gave me this vision of the life that I wanted to have, right? I mean, I wanted to have a good job. And so I went to school. I studied really, really hard. And I would get into careers And it just seemed like I had to work a lot harder than everybody else did. Everybody else seemed to be doing what the managers were telling us to do when they were having success and I wasn't. And it pushed me back into a bout of depression. It really was the second bout of depression I went through in my life. And when I was on my way out of that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. This is not going to happen to me ever again. And that's when I really started studying lots of different fields of alternative medicines, of what happens through the process of the modalities of therapy, and what were people doing to me trying to help me get up on my feet. And and the vision that came to me, and it really was a vision, it wasn't like just a big light bulb, it was like everything became clear when I finally understood that those people that we see succeeding, when you see somebody doing something you want, it doesn't necessarily have to be in business. It could be in their relationships with their spouse or their relationships with their mm-hmm. kids or yeah. what they have built into them just because of the luck of probability of their life experiences, everything lined up to take the actions necessary. And because of that, it doesn't matter what barrier gets put up in front of them. It doesn't matter how many people tell them, no, they can't do it. They already have the internal decision that yes, they can, and they're just going to go do it. And they don't okay, so, need everybody else to tell. So them. help me with this for a second, because and I, sorry to interrupt. I just uh, as, I, as again train of thought. Just it's no, like a train please, wreck yes. coming through. A train wreck coming through. <laughs> so how how is what you do differently with with uh, with working with people's energy and working with people's helping them clear with clarity and focus and confidence? How is that different, or maybe it's the same as performance coaching? Because is this a is this a style of performance coaching? I would say it's very close to a style and some performance coaching. One of the things that – one of the doorways that I've come through that I'm most excited about is the idea that I can teach somebody to actually do this on their own. 
Yeah. So, so and and your the ability to do it multiple times during the day. You know, the da- the data is out there for us. subconsciously. You're processing data not only faster than you are consciously, but you're also processing data you are not consciously aware of. So. Every moment that you're operating during the day, you're digesting and learning things and you're going to eventually take action based upon what you learned and you didn't even know that it's in there. So for to say, oh, well, come talk to me as a coach once a month or once a week if you can afford to do that, that's still not enough for the amount of data that I'm being bombarded with. No, it's, the by, the mi- it's mo- by the minute. You have to, it's almost like mindfulness meditation in that you, ha- you can't just go to a practitioner and in a class. You need to be able to do this on your own at the moment that you're experiencing whatever it is you're experiencing. Exactly. And, and one of the things I developed with the emotional mantra technique, which you'll see videos of me doing on my website, one of the things I'm, what I'm trying to get people to understand with that is that's your tool. That's your weapon. I do that technique. I bet you I do that eight to 10 times a day. Wow. Wow. So I'm ca- I'm, I'm in, I, cause I know that my brain is, is, you know, I'm building a business just like everybody else listening to this podcast is involved in business. And we have a lot of naysayers in our lives, right? We have a lot of people right. that will tell us, oh, that that's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do that. Or many clients that just say, you know, this just wasn't worth it. The people will say that to you and it makes you want to stop. You have to combat that in order to keep moving to get to the dream that you have for yourself. All and right, if so you don't hold- have a tool that you can fight that fast, you're, you're, you're toast. No, you, You're going to lose. Completely, I completely agree with you, and we've and we've held this carrot out in front of the nice guy community with with uh, you know I I talked about it when we were when we were about to fire up the video, and I said you may feel like this is some some level of woo woo, and it really is not. There is there is a, a definite feeling that is happening in your head and in your hands and, and, and in your body when you're going through this this process that that Craig is is putting you through. So, talk about the process for a moment so people kind of understand, and then we will again make sure that we refer to the um, the uh, the video so that people can actually see this in action because it is it is incredible. And even if you don't feel like my Video is is particularly incredible because it's hard to reach a conclusion in a, a ten or a fifteen minute video. There are a number of times uh, on on uh, your website, Craig, where you're showing video and you actually are reaching conclusions. And I can tell you are in just a minute and a half or two minutes with someone or yourself on right directly on camera. Exactly, and 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 one of the things about this process that I really the nuts that makes it work, the nuts and bolts of it, is that you and I hold every experience we've ever had in our lives, even the ones we're not consciously aware of, we hold them by emotions. If you, I forgot the, there was a cartoon that came out. My kids watched it, and now the name is totally um, missing me, but it's about, it's about your brain and how it holds memories. And, but in that movie, they talk about how it's all emotionally driven, and there were five emotions they used as characters. Well, there's actually six emotions that drive your body, and I learned those emotions originally from some great chiropractors out of Rogers, Arkansas, named the Mortars, and they have a great technique known as BEST. And But then I've later verified it through um, psychotherapy. These are the six major emotions to us. And what these emotions act for us is they can not only act as the ones that hold experiences, but they can give us the power to change the emotion attached to the experience. So everybody oh, wants boy. to let go. Everybody wants to forgive, right? I and mean, we all know that's important. Right. But how do we actually do it? Well, because your brain's never going to forget an experience. Well, when we say I forgive something or I've let go of something, I've changed my emotional connection to it. So it's not driving my actions the same way anymore. So, so, okay, so, so go ahead. okay, no, you go, you go. I'm, I'm, I, I keep that's okay. I'm like, okay, I got another one. I got another one. So I'm just going to shut <laughs> no, up. That's you fine. Keep, you that's keep fine. Every so, time. so hey. let's just, let's put, let's put an example on this for somebody. Okay. So I'm in, I've come from a sales background. So I've, I've gone into sales and I have been rejected 15, 16 times in a row. All right. It's hard for me to pick up the phone the 17th time. I mean, that's just hard (laughs) to do. Right. Uh But I know I have to do it or I'm not going to get paid. I'm not going to get my commissions. Right. Right. So I have to change that experience of being told no. When somebody tells me no, I feel disappointment. I feel frustration. I have fear. Well, if I can use a simple kinetic technique, which we learned on the video and you can see on my website, where I ask myself yes and no binary questions and I can identify which one of these six emotions is going to change my emotional connection to those experiences, 
It works. It can do it in less than a minute. Now, all of a sudden, now I have that energy. I have that drive again to pick up the phone the 15th time. So we can do this in all aspects of our lives. You know, I I mentioned working out. You know, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to diet. It's hard to eat less calories when your friends are over there having chocolate cake. But if you have a different emotional connection to how you have eaten in the past, if you can change that connection to it, then you can get this word confidence and this word drive to say, you know what, you guys enjoy your chocolate cake. I'm going to have a glass of water and sit here and enjoy our social in time. So because I ask, have the drive to do that, yes. So I'm going to ask you to try to describe in, um, you know, in whatever detail that you need to go into, try to describe for me this, this, um, this very visual process in an audio format. So, uh, Absolutely. And again, we will refer back to the video and we'll put a link on the, in the show notes. But just so you're aware, explain how the process works. Because I do the yeses. And, I mean, you know how to do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. so, so you're, what we're doing is we're basically making two okay signs with our hands and we're interlocking our fingers and now we have two circles that either have to stay complete or they open up and if you follow typical holistic techniques there's degrees to this and as a practitioner when I learned best I learned it and I still use that technique with my family it is a little bit about how strong it is and weak it is and that's very hard to learn and it's very hard to do on a normal basis so I switched it and I asked myself could I just ask myself to show me what does a yes look like and what does a no look like and make it binary and it did it worked And once I did that, I went back to the way I learned how to do programming and Fortran and COBOL and and C++ programming. And they had these arrays where even though I could only ask a computer a yes or no question, because that's all that's happening inside your computer. It's just binary. Mm -hmm. I I could get lots of information by using an array process where I can ask, so show me a yes or a no now. Is the emotion I need, is it fear? And I get a yes or a no. Then is it anger? Then I get a yes and a no. And I make my way down. I may end up the first time through, I may get two out of six. I may get three out of six. But now I've narrowed it back down. Now I come back. Okay, well, out of these three, which one is it? Show me a yes or no. And that's all the computer's doing. And this little test of my fingers, which I could teach anybody to do. I taught you how to do it, Doug. Yeah. And, and I, I sat there and showed you how to do it then now that person is in control. And as a practitioner, all I'm doing is guiding for them. And that feeling of self-control is so powerful in the healing process. It's so powerful in the changing process because you don't feel like somebody's doing something to you. You feel like somebody's helping you change you. And that is a big change and a big shift I'm trying to get people to realize. Well, the process was pretty amazing. I mean, w- what it really did I- include was me just digging as far as I could. You know, the idea behind it is don't think a lot, just let it happen. And you have to, the first few moments of, of putting this together, you actually, you're, you're trying not to not to confuse yourself by thinking too hard. And that's, letting go is probably the, <laughs> the biggest challenge, not just in, not just in the, uh, you know, just taking taking yourself out of the here and now but just in life in general i mean those three words that that let it go those are the cha- most challenging words that we have to deal with i think not just to understand this video but just to understand what it is about your past that that really will is holding you back is just to let it go right and 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 to understand that i'm i'm not saying you're ever going to forget it what you're going to do is you're going to change the way you feel about it and your reaction to it. I heard from a great, great spiritual leader one time this statement, and I totally believe it. Now, at first I didn't, but I totally believe it. And he said, you need to understand you're not thinking through life. You are reacting through life. Wow. And, and it's so true. It is so true. You and I are reacting to anything that happens. And, you know, think about, think about if you're the CEO of a company or a vice president of, of a division of a company. Every day, you're really not in control of your day. People are bringing stuff to you, right? Right, You're at the top. People are bringing stuff to you. So you're reacting all day long. So, Go ahead. 
Yeah, I was going to say connect this back because I think that that you have a really you you're a, you're making a really good point, and I want to br- make sure that people understand that this is not this is not just something that you do that that will help you just kind of understand and see the light differently. I mean, it really is about pra- connect this back to how this helps actually CEOs and and managers of companies and people that own organizations in in helping them find some level of success that they've never thought before was was even possible. Right, and there's and there's that's thank you so much because there's actually two pieces to that. The first one is kind of what I'm going on right here in front of you. Let's just finish that thought. So I have to change the way I'm reacting, so my employees will react different. We all understand mirroring, we all understand karma, whatever you want to call it. So if I react angrily to somebody, well, that person is naturally going to act angrily back to me. Yeah. And so I need, as if I'm the leader, I need to be the calm one. I need to be the one that reacts like, hey, we got this. I know this sounds crazy. It looks weird right now, but you know what? We've got this. We can figure this out. And if you're not reacting that way, that's because of experiences that have told you not to react that way. It's not something you're consciously doing. And so you need to do the self-improvement work to change the way you're reacting. But learning this binary technique, the way of asking myself yes and no, is once I've made the change and I'm comfortable with that, I've opened a doorway into doing data analytics with my own brain. Think about all the experiences that are in my brain as the leader of a company. I've been in this business for decades. I understand what's happening around it. I have all of it in my brain and I can access it just by asking myself simple yes and no questions to make Mm -hmm. better decisions for my company that I would have to otherwise be making with a limited amount of data I have in my conscious brain. And now you're just, we just opened up a completely different door that I can help leaders understand how to access this data of all their experiences to make better decisions for their companies. And now look at solopreneurs. I mean, we're over here all by ourselves. We're trying to do all this work. How do we know if it's a right or wrong decision? Well, wouldn't you like to be able to access that deep amount of knowledge and data yes. that's inside yeah. your subconscious mind? Well, using a simple technique with your fingers, you can. I can and remember- that is a very powerful thing. I can. Uh, I remember from some personal experience searching for an answer to some huge levels of anxiety that I had um, experienced just a couple of years ago. And I looked for, I looked in a couple of different directions. One of them was a cognitive behavioral therapist, and 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 the other was almost like an energy reader or a, a, an energy therapist. I don't even know. I mean, but I found both to be quite helpful. It seems like this is kind of walking the line between both of those. Uh, do you see this as science? Do you see this as suggestion? I know your your background in in the analytical side probably leads it more in the science side, but then there is some level of you know again that yeah. not in a negative way that woo woo thing that's like wow this actually there is it, some something to it. But you know what, Doug? Even in science, science accepts there's a universal intelligence that it doesn't understand. Yeah, and, 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 it, and it accepts that it's there and then sometimes it has to use it and sometimes it has to leave it up to that, right? So I think it is walking the line of both. It's walking the line very specifically of both. And, and you, one of the things that I love about it in my own personal life and the people that I've helped really incorporate it into their lives is giving them access to that part of their heart and that part of their soul that they knew was always there and they always wanted to have it in the decision-making process. They always wanted to have it in their work life and they just couldn't figure out a way to get it there. Well, this is a way we got it there. And they really feel like they're making much broader and much stronger decisions because of it. They don't feel like they're having to make it a give and take a relationship anymore. Tell me, do you think that this this would work for anyone or or maybe who is the biggest challenge when it comes to dealing with with what your what your application and what your process is? Well, you know, it's it, 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 yes. To answer your question, yes, it can work for everybody. The challenge comes to how comfortable I can get you to believing that you can really communicate with yourself subconsciously mm-hmm. and that it's okay. And both of those are pretty big walls. We, you know, we call it the art of being successful. Well, art's act, actually an acronym. And the first step is understanding the awareness of what's happening in your life, why things are the way they are, why people treat you the way they treat you, why you're getting the results that you're getting. The next step then is release. 
So you need that awareness. If you don't have that awareness of what's truly understanding, then you're not going to get the release. Once you learn the release techniques, then you got to go to train. And training is building that habit of using these techniques daily. So it's a, it, is a, it is a step process, but that awareness process is important because you're not just going to pick it up and just incorporate it into your life. You have to understand how much data is there, and there's so much, there's so much I could share right now. I don't want to go off on all the other tangents of what I've learned from how Albert Einstein explained how energy works in a body and how chiropractors see how energy works in a body. The theology of how energy works in a body is all very important information that everybody needs in different degrees to cross this bridge that, hey, I can communicate with myself, this deep part of me. I can communicate with it, and I need to communicate with it. What I see so wonderful about what you're saying is that this can work not only on a, on a company-wide level, but it certainly can work on an individual level. Uh, tell me how you, how you work. How, if, somebody's was, if somebody was interested in bringing you either out to their company or talking to you about doing your process with them, how, how does that work? How do they get in touch with you? So you get in touch with me easiest through my website, but I'll be glad to just give you my email address. It's Craig at CraigHollenberger.com. Um, and you're welcome to call me at 512-560-3778. But how I work with organizations is basically following a pattern of come in and do workshops. I like to work top down. Again, we, we have talked here a lot about working with CEOs and leaders, getting them bought in and understanding so the the, the levels each down all the way down to the individual computer contributors of a company can see that the leadership is doing it. That's going to give them more buy-in to take advantage of it themselves. Also, do the workshops. I have a lot of my workshop recorded. So after somebody's been through a workshop, they can be given access to the audio and the video of the workshop to get the repetition on their own. Coming in and I do, I do much smaller coaching workshops down to like nine or ten people where we can really engage with them and then doing one-on-one -on -one coaching that I actually can do right over a computer just like I taught you right over a Skype video call. That's great. And so th there's it too, we level it down. We have the large keynote all the way down to the breakout session at a convention all the way down to a workshop done inside of a company with nine or ten people to one-on-one -on -one coaching. You, uh, the, um, you have a sense of humor, as I could tell from the answers to some of your uh, Q&A. When I ask you what song would, be, would you have as your, uh, like your life representation, you said, that's easy. That's Crazy Train. <laughs> so, crazy Train. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you ever listen to the words of Crazy Train, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying is exactly, you know, I'm jumping off the train. I'm going to be crazy, and I'm jumping off the train. I'm going to get on this other one because I'm not to, following that normal train anymore. Well, you have to kind of put your brain on a little bit backwards to, and not maybe not backwards, but you just have to understand things a little differently, and you have to you have to believe that stuff can work that is not just your ordinary. You know, let's just keep. Uh, you know, I know Gary Vee has got this big hustle mentality, but sometimes it's it's not just about hustle. It's about feeding your brain the right information, and it's got to all start from. Uh, uh, from within. Well, you know, Doug, I, you have to work hard. You have to hustle. You have to do the activities. But one of the things that I found in my own life is I would say, well, this is my barrier. If I go over and work through this, man, my job's going to be so much easier. And I would defeat that barrier and nothing changed because that was not the real barrier keeping me from success. And being able to use the techniques the way I've created them with this kinetics and coming back asking myself yes and no. I don't have to waste my time anymore. I can go find what's really keeping me from jumping to the success I desire. So if I'm going to fight and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to put my energy into it, I'm sure going to make sure that's the barrier that's actually going to move the dominoes and be that center of influence to get me where I want to go. Well, I am looking forward to hearing many, many more great things about your company and about the process that you have. It's called The Art of Being Successful. Uh, Craig Hollenberger is our guest today. And uh, again, we'll make sure that we put links not only in the show notes, how to get in touch with Craig for more information about his, his uh, services, but also uh, you'll get to see it firsthand with, uh, with Mr. Nice Guy, with me uh, actually doing it with Craig. And, uh, and we'll make a link available that will probably go. We don't know where it's going to go right now, but we're thinking it's going to go over to his, uh, his website. So Craig, thanks for being a part of the uh, uh, the Nice Guy community today. Well, thanks, Doug. Thank you so much for having me. Nice Guy community, never underestimate the power of nice or the art of being successful. Special thanks to Greg Hollenberger for being on the show today. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. 
Call 4242 DJ Doug and record an intro for the show to hear on a future episode. Say anything you want. Hell, take my job. I'm getting sick of these guys anyway. We still rolling? Don't tell him I said that. Oh, I see. Running away, eh? You yellow bastards. Come back here and take what's coming to you. I'll bite your legs off.